This time we're going to call forth Brother Ashley Haynes. He already got his testimony out the way. And actually, Grandma Gail said that that's her twenty dollars you found in, in in the washer. Now the one in your jacket, that one may be yours, but the one in the washer, that one was her. <laughs> Got to pay tithes at Grandma Gail's house too. All right. Feels good to shake these nerves off when you get up here. Start tingling. I don't know if it's the Holy Ghost or I'm just nervous. <laughs> I'm going to start it off with, I was kind of scared in Sunday school when, when Jason was saying this verse because I thought he was going to go on my message because I had my, you know, I was already studying on this before. Um, Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So today I want to talk about, there are a lot of so-called Christians. They call themselves Christians. But they don't really show themselves Christianly. And, and I go... Certain places, wherever I go throughout my day, I see, I see a lot of these people. And they have certain, they have like hate mail. Oh, oh, what that mean? They, have, they have messages they may, they may send towards an atheist or a Jehovah Witness or a Baptist because they get in their minds that the religion, they get in their minds, they're in a certain religion. Uh-huh. And now everything... Every way that we live is now a sport. Uh-huh. So if I'm rooting for my team, now I'm rooting against their team. Come on. But we're not supposed to be fighting against flesh and blood. We're supposed to be fighting against these demonic forces yeah. that are influencing them. Yeah. We're, as, as Christians, we're not supposed to be fighting against atheists. We're not supposed to be fighting against celebrities. We're not supposed to be fighting against people from other religions. We're not fighting against these people. We're fighting for these people. And and another thing we're doing, we may not we may not notice it, but we're fighting against flesh and blood, and and are gossiping. And now and now many people heard me say this before. They like to call it they like to call this gossip prayer request. I go up to her, I say, hey, hey, uh, Bobby, he, he cheating on his wife, man. We need to pray for him. They, they don't need to know all that. That's not, a, that's not a reason to insert all their private information in there. You can't, you can't use God to, to, to gossip. We're, we're fighting. And then, and then we're, and then another thing where we, you say you're looking for a solution by, by telling all these people, their business. I'm not. I'm not trying to hurt them. I'm. I'm. I'm looking out for the solution. I'm. I'm talking to these people, telling them all their business, all right. so that I can help them. All Maybe right. they have something to tell me. I, yeah. No. Now you're making them look at this person in a negative way. Right. Now everybody that you talk to is gonna associate this person in a bad person category. Right. Now we're now we're labeling this person as a bad person. You can't help it. Amen. If if my family hears something about somebody that that I had a a problem with, yeah. that's your family. They're, they're for you. And they're against whoever is coming up against you. So that's just how it works. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the, edif- to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. If we're not ministering grace, then we're ministering condemnation on all of these people. We're not giving them a chance. People think the way to, to win is to offend. And, and this isn't true, but this is the way our, our traditional minds are set up. And we're, we're labeling all these people as, as bad people, but in 
First Timothy 4, 4, it says, for every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Romans 14 and 1. What is that? It says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Because we hear someone say something that we don't agree with, that, that our pastor didn't say, now we're saying, okay, that man ain't going to make it. Come on. We, we don't give him a chance. No, I ain't talking to him. I ain't, I ain't talking to that atheist. I'm not finna talk to him. He going to confuse me. I... How can, you, how can you get confused when you're the one that's searching for the truth? Who's going to help these people? We're going to keep telling ourselves, no, nah, no, nah, he's going to confuse me. Somebody got to talk to him. Somebody got to bring him in. And, and every day I live my life helping people as if no one else is going to. And, and the crazy thing is, it's like, the demons, these demonic forces, they have our people captive. Yeah. And we'll just take out the gun and just start shooting. You need to make sure that you aiming and take your time before you just start shooting something. Amen. You see, you see the evil there. But it's not the flesh and blood. It's the it's what's influencing him. Yeah. Talk is okay, but love goes all the way. And the Bible says, charity never faileth. But when there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Sometimes you can prophesy to somebody, they're not going to get it. They won't come in. Sometimes they're not going to come in. How do you get them to come in? Love. Love is God. God is love. How, how else are we supposed to get these people who don't believe, I'm going to bring the Bible to somebody who doesn't believe in the Bible. Come on. No, I'm going to bring them love. Yeah, love right? That's how you get them to, to ah! even consider what you're saying. Why, why am I going to listen to somebody that I don't like? Why am I going to listen to somebody that's speaking to me, I'm going to hell? I don't want to hear that. I want to see, I want, I want some love. I'm not going to listen to a word you got to say unless you show me some love. You come up to me and you disrespect me and the way that I live my life. I'm not listening to a word you have to say. You give me a verse or you show me love and I will consider something that you got to say. And that's the, way that, that's the way people's minds are set up. You can't just keep talking the same thing. It's, it's insanity. You keep expecting to change somebody. Obviously, they're not listening. You can't keep using the same methods over and over again. That, it's not working. Some people just, just, just beat their children for the same thing over and over again. Sometimes you just got to let go and, and let God... Let God take care of it because it's not working. Now, you're beating them like a mad dog. And this is, this is um, in closing. I've got one more verse. This is how we, this is how we really break those barriers that, that cause us not to be able to connect with people. Because a lot of people, have, a lot of a, a lot of so-called Christians, they just they can you know they can speak the word, they can do all this stuff, but it's like, how can you connect with the people who don't have what you have? They've never experienced it, oh, it. and this is how you do it. <laughs> to the weak, to them that are without law, as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might gain them that are without the law. Yeah. To the weak I became as weak, Come on, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, yes. that I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Amen. Now, you got to understand this this metaphor that's used and um, when I 
when they say I am becoming, I, I am weak to those that are weak, what I'm doing, I am not bringing myself down. When I, I'm not becoming a sinner. I'm not becoming this person that I'm trying to convince to live this better way. I'm not becoming that. What I'm doing, I'm stepping aside myself. I'm stepping in their shoes to see where they are. If I'm looking at them and they're in this maze, how can I tell them how to get out if I don't see where they are? I have to, I have to understand them. I have to take the time to, to hear them out. I may know for a fact they, they don't know what they're talking about. Let me just listen to see where they are. So that way I can guide them out. First thing we want to do, we want to shut them out. No, 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 you're wrong. I'm not listening to that. God is good. God is good. He is good. But they don't believe that sometimes. You have to find a way to convey your message. You have to, wait. You have to find a way to get your message through. And if I, have to, if I have to make them believe that I'm a Jehovah Witness, I'm going to sit there and I'm going I'm to ask questions. I'm going to study what they give me to study because I want to know where they are. And sometimes you find yourself finding out that you're wrong about some things. And that's it. That's all I have right now. Thank <laughs> you.